Hello everyone. Today we'll develop a structured approach to problem solving. So firstly, why do we need a structured approach? Well, if you look at any human endeavor, if you want to get better at something, then we need to develop a good technique. So here's an example. So for example, if you want to uh, play badminton and you know become better at it, so you know you have to start right from like a proper grip and then like some basic footwork and then like how to serve and like how to smash and so on so here are some basic uh, uh skills you need to develop in order to be a decent badminton player right and similarly if you want to become a better batsman you need to have like a proper stance and then you need to you know have a like proper grip and then you need to develop your front foot and back foot shots and so on so similarly if you want to become problem better problem solvers we need to develop a good technique so for that uh, we will use a technique by a mathematician named uh, george polya who described a technique to become uh, better at problem solving so these are the four principles or rather the four steps you need in order to solve a mathematical problem but the same techniques also apply even when you want to solve a programming problem with some slight modifications we will discuss those modifications later okay so here are the four steps firstly you need to understand the problem so we are not going to jump into code straight away right first we need we will spend some time some quality time understanding the problem after that we will come up with a plan this is step 2 right only after that only after we verify that our plan is solid and our logic is correct only then we will carry out the plan in the case of programming carrying out the plan means writing the code and finally we'll look back on our work you know once we verified that the code is correct we will think hey how can it be better how can i be faster can i apply a different technique can i apply the same technique to some other problem what did i learn today what do i need to learn more in order to solve problems quickly and so on so enough with the theory let's get started with an example where we apply these techniques okay so here's the problem we are going to solve today the problem is find the contiguous sub array within a one dimensional array of numbers which has the largest sum okay so i know that it is like quite a bit to swallow so let's uh, break down the problem a little bit so we have a one dimensional array of numbers okay and then we want to find a sub array that to a contiguous sub array which has the largest sum okay so firstly we need to understand the problem right so we'll spend some time just trying to make sure that we have a solid understanding at this stage we won't worry about how we are going to solve the how we are going to solve the problem okay so first first up let's find out what this contiguous sub array means so let me first google contiguous okay so it says sharing a common border or next or together in sequence okay now it is making a little bit more sense so let me give you some examples of contiguous sub arrays so this is an example input and this is the entire array and then the contiguous sub arrays are these small slices so we have like 2 comma minus 1 and then you can have like minus 1 2 4 and then 2 4 minus 3 and then this entire array itself so these are all the slices of that array or rather the contiguous sub arrays so we want to find one which has the largest sum so a single element itself is a sub array right so we have 2 minus 1 2 so and so on so these are all like the sub arrays of size 1 uh, similarly we have like 2 comma minus 1 and then we can have like minus 1 comma 2 and then 2 comma 4 comma minus 3 and uh, so on so among all these sub arrays we want to find the one with the largest sum okay so yeah this is how uh, you know we have to spend time understanding the problem okay so now i encourage you to pause this video and spend some time uh, solving the problem for yourself okay 
so go ahead please pause the video okay uh, we are back okay so now we have like a okay understanding so let's dive deeper and understand the problem better so to understand the problem better come up with more test cases including some edge cases and don't worry about how we are going to solve the problem at this stage we'll worry about it in the next step at this stage we'll just worry about the what what we need to do okay so here we have like two examples so if this is the input then this sub -haric apparently has the largest sum okay and then if the input is 1 comma 2 comma 3 then the output once again is 1 comma 2 comma 3 because this is the largest uh, uh, I mean this is the sub array with the largest uh, sum so let's come up with more test cases so what if the input is a single uh, integer right I mean an array having a single integer In that case the output is trivial the output will also be uh, the array with the same uh, number now if we have like 1 comma 2 then uh, let's come up with the sub arrays right we have like 1 and then 2 and then 1 comma 2 so now the uh, output once again is 1 comma 2 because uh, the sum of 1 comma 2 is 3 right which is great which is the greatest so these are all the sums of the individual uh, sub arrays so the output is the third sub array right so now you might, you might think hey I can just include all the elements in the array and of course that will be the one with the largest sum right but no uh, an interesting thing happens if we also have some negative numbers so we have like 1 comma 2 comma let's say we have like minus 10 and then 3 comma 4 so as soon as we include this minus 10 you know it will just uh, negate all the positive numbers that we have over here so if we have like 1 comma 2 comma minus 10 as one of the sub arrays its sum is minus 7 right so just intuitively we know that okay this minus 10 is a bad thing it probably does not belong in the sub array with the largest sum so intuitively we can say hey probably the number with the with, sorry the array with the uh, largest sum is 3 comma 4 so this way you know come up with more test cases and then improve your understanding of, of the problem and during this phase you'll also develop some new insights like the one here if there are negative numbers then it's not it's probably uh, not part, part of the uh, sub array this is just some intuition of course it could still belong to uh, the maximum sub array so can you pause the video again and think of a case where a negative number still belongs to uh, the sub array with the largest sum okay so now we are back uh, let's say let's come up with another example right so we have like 4 and then minus 2 and 3 comma 4 so in this case 3 comma 4 the sum is 7 so you might be tempted to think hey 3 comma 4 is the sub array with the largest sum and if you include this minus 2 it only reduces the uh, sum so with minus 2 the number is uh, the sum is 5 but if you include 4 because 4 is greater than minus 2 we find that uh, 4 it is good to include both 4 and minus 2 in our largest sub array so the largest sub array is the array itself and its sum is uh, 7 plus 4 11 11 minus 2 is 9 so we can come up with uh, I mean the output is the uh, input is itself and its sum is 9 so still anyway we found that the negative number is still part of the um, sub array with the largest sum okay so now we need to come up with a plan let's do that in the next video okay